Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Zanut here. Well, today I've got a new video review for you. This is of the Case Labs Magnum TH10A case. Now, Case Labs specializes in designing and manufacturing custom computer cases to fit your specific needs. They range in everything from Mini ITX all the way up to uh, dual system cases, towering two motherboard capable cases. But this particular review here is for the Magnum series TH10A case. Now this particular case supports everything on its motherboard tray up through an HP TX motherboard and I'll talk more about that when we get inside the case. But it just gives you an idea of the flexibility that this case has. Now there are many options for this case that you can get and these options will allow you to custom configure this again for any uh, air or water cooled system but certainly one of the key things that Case Labs provides and specializes in is options for your water cooling needs. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and take you a little closer look and more detail of this case. We'll talk about its features and the various options that are available for you. And then we'll go ahead and mock fit some pieces in there to give you a better idea of what your system might look like in here. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now one of the uh, key features of uh, this Magnum TH10A and basically all Case Labs cases is that they use .090 inch aluminum for the frames of the uh, cases that they manufacture. Uh, it's also 2.33 millimeters uh, for the frames and then 0 0.063 or 1.6 millimeter for the doors. That's the uh, thickness of the aluminum they use so it's a very thick and sturdy and durable and you, you can tell when you feel it. And again since it's aluminum it's very light and easy for modding uh, as compared to you know using steel much heavier and that certainly is more difficult to uh, mod if you need to. Now the uh, Magnum TH10A as you can see is a double wide case and this particular unit is all black. Now you can get uh, in solid colors you can get it uh, all white or primer gray or also in gunmetal. So in addition to black there are three other solid colors and then you can uh, also arrange to uh, buy it in a two-tone. You can get black and white or black and primer, uh, you know, black and primer gray, white and primer gray, or white and gunmetal, or gunmetal and primer gray. So uh, those are some of the options that you can um, buy the uh, Magnum TH10A in. And then all of this is available on their website. If you go to www.caselabs-store.com uh, you'll be able to configure your Magnum TH10A in any way you want and have all the options. So uh, those are some of the base colors. Now one of the things I'm going to do here is um, since this is made of aluminum and I mentioned the panels, uh, everything pops off of uh, this case. And so we're going to strip it down so that you can see the uh, frame and the base of the unit and then I'll talk more about uh, the various options that you can configure the case with as we as I spin it around and take you through uh, each of the uh, uh, points. So what I'm going to do right now is uh, remove uh, the uh, panels uh, from the case. Now before I start removing panels let me first give you the dimensions of the TH10A. Uh, without any feet or casters on it the unit is 15 inches wide by 26 inches deep by 25 inches tall. Now if you add the rubber feet which are standard they are an additional three quarters of an inch and if you add any of the optional casters the standard casters will add 2.6 inches to the height and the heavy duty casters will add three inches to the height. I'm going to take off the front and there are various little uh, nipples on the panels that allow you to put into their uh, mounting system. So it allows you to easily remove panels from the case. And here's a close-up of the easy to use latching system that Case Labs uses to mount their front panels, the side panels, doors, and even the tops. Uh, basically you have um, these uh, two screws holding in this clip and what it'll do is it mates with this uh, nipple right here. So what it'll do is just simply push it in and snaps in place. And then to open it, you just pull on it and it comes right out. But it does keep the panel in place and will not move and come loose. 
Uh, same thing, not only the doors, the top. This top also has one there. And there's a nipple right underneath there. And they snap right in place. Very easy to use, and it's used throughout the uh, mounting of all of the doors and panels on a Case Labs case. So that's the uh, front, the top, and this is an optional top that uh, is uh, 30 millimeters thick, I believe it is. And so, uh, but I'll talk more about that when we get to that. And so here you see on the front of the case, you have the, uh, the base panel, and we have on here, first of all, you'll see the front I.O. Now this is the front I.O. panel here, and you can get it uh, without anything, just a blank panel, or you can get it with just the uh, power and reset switch only. And then as an option, which I have uh, here, is the USB and the HD audio. So those are some of the options you can get with regards to the uh, front I.O. Now over here, we have um, various uh, panels. These are, um, you know, for one, a five and a quarter inch bay, uh, uh, filler plates. That's a dual and that's a triple. And so here you have options for uh, having uh, uh, solid panels here, if you like. And you can also get uh, ventilated panels. And this actually happens to be a uh, flex bay option, which allows you to mount a, a fan uh, inside of here. So you can get solid panels or ventilated or any combinations uh, of those. And then this is actually where the flex bay um, uh, options come into play. And I'm going to, I'll show you uh, more of those uh, when we get to the inside of the case. On the left hand side of the case you have here uh, 120 millimeter uh, uh, panel options. Two of these actually are covered with plates. And the other two right here are set up to allow you to uh, uh, put fans or ventilation in there and then when we get onto the inside you'll see some of the options that you can mount in that particular uh, place there as well. Now moving on to the left hand side of the Magnum TH10A uh, you'll notice that for most cases this is the business side of the case where you would have your motherboard. Well that is not the way I ordered this particular configuration and you can order the cases in a standard orientation which this would be um, but I ordered it reverse. So what you're looking at here really is the back side of the motherboard tray and then this is the compartment here where you can add your where you will have your power supplies. You also have the capability for mounting hard drives. These are hard drive uh, bays right here that allow you to mount drives in here and then you can have uh, fans mounted in the front of them that bring air through and across your drives. And also as I showed you from the top view you also have the capability to mount fans in the top here uh, and or a radiator if you wanted and also in the bottom and here on the bottom you can see 420 millimeter fan mounts on the bottom of the power supply chamber and also for on the motherboard chamber side of the case and I removed the blanking plates that were at the bottom so you could see now the doors on the Magnum TH10A you can get solid with no vents at all, ventilated as you see here, or you can get it with windows and you can get an, an XL window or an XXL window and it's the same for both sides and I do have a XXL window on the other side. Now the uh, solid and the ventilated are standard uh, but the windows depending on the size of window you want those are, uh, those are optional. So again, but you can configure it any way you want. And these doors, again, they have the same uh, mechanism across the case to uh, snap right in and close. And also, these doors are removable by just actually lifting them right off of the um, chassis. And they are reversible. So if you wanted to swap the doors on either side, you could just remove the pins and flip them around on the door and put them on the other side. And same thing with the mounts right here. So uh, here we have the, in this particular case, this is like I said, a uh, reverse uh, oriented case. So what uh, you would normally have the motherboard here, this is the back side of it and you have feed throughs to be able to provide access to drive bays that we have uh, here. And then we also have um, uh, power supply mounts. This is where the power supplies go. They would be in this compartment as well. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you both uh, mounting of the power supply 
and how uh, you can position it, and also uh, hard drives in the uh, in the in the Mac base that are here. Now the case comes standard with one of these Mac 101 uh, bays, and these bays are hard drive uh, bays that allow you to mount uh, one, two, three, four, three and a half inch uh, hard drives in it, along with uh, space that you can actually mount the fan to bring air and blow through uh, across your hard drives. And I'll go ahead and show you how um, one of the drives mounts into this bay. And now you can see also in the case, this is where the power reset switch and the USB and HD audio uh, cables. The sleeving on the switches is nice all the way down, nice heat shrink at the very end. And uh, each of the connections to your motherboard are labeled. They are plenty long enough, so even though this case is uh, big, uh, your motherboard, depending if it's up here, easily reached, down here, easily reached, or you can certainly bring it through the front. So it's got plenty of length to connect to your motherboard. And then the uh, USBs, uh, there are two USBs if you have this option. And again, plenty, plenty of uh, long enough length. Uh, usually you have, if there's two on the motherboard, there's one out the front, and then one usually up on the top on the side. And again, there's plenty of length, for, again, for both of these. And then the uh, HD audio. HD audio is usually near the end, so that one you might need an extension for depending on where your HD audio adapter is. So that would be one thing to consider. Um, or you can certainly bring it through the front instead of going up and around. <clears throat> and this would definitely make it long enough if you went through the front right to the portion on the motherboard. So let me show you now how uh, the hard drive bay uh, mounts. Basically what you receive in the HDD uh, kit are 16 shoulder screws and 16 isolation mounts that allow you to uh, screw into the side of the drive. So you can mount uh, two on either side of each drive up to four drives. And this is what the isolation mount looks like when it's uh, threaded with the uh, screw. And really all you do is just push it through. And then what we'll do is we'll secure this to the side of the drives and then you'll be able to install it inside of the Mac drive bay. I'll go ahead and show you that now. What to do is you install, you've got two on one side, and then I'm not going to install the other two because what you're going to do is slide it inside and align it to whichever position you want. And what you'll do is you'll drop down, you will wind up dropping them down and sliding into the notches that are in the bay. And then on this side here, you simply, and on the opposite side, you'll screw it into the positions that you want to use. Once you have them secured, then again, all you're going to do is push the drive down so it engages into the uh, notches in the isolation mounts. And so you have your hard drive now fully mounted, up to four of them. And then and to install them inside of the case, we'll show you how they mount. In order to mount a fan onto the back bay for your hard drives, they'll remove four screws from here, and then this allows you to remove the uh, fan mount tray. And then what you'll do is you will take a fan, and you will secure it using the uh, mounting points and your your fan screws or your um, you know anti-vibration rubber screws to secure your fan to the tray. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And with your fan secured to your tray, and what we'll do is uh, we will remount the tray to the Mac bay with the fan. Now we, we have the uh, full tray assembly with the fan mounted and the hard drive. We're going to install it inside of the TH-10A. So one of the key things for all of the flex bays and uh, the Mac bays here are 
these pins that are um, located on, in each of the drive bay areas, even on the flex bay side. And basically what you'll do is you'll take your mounting device, in this case it's the uh, tray, the Mac bay tray, and you'll line it up with uh, this position right here. So what we're going to do is we'll take it, and then once we slide it in, we have it uh, a guide in place so it's being held, and then we take the uh, screws, and these are standard screws for all of the uh, both the flex bays and these Mac bays, and that's what we'll do to secure it through the threaded inserts that are in the uh, in the bay. So once we have that in place, and we have an installed hard drive tray, and it also has the fan installed as well, as you can see from the front. And of course, mounting SSDs uh, would also be done in this uh, setup uh, using a three and a half inch, uh, two and a half inch to three and a half inch adapter plate for your SSDs. Now the Magnum TH-10A has spots for two power supplies. So uh, obviously this double wide case allows you to have tremendous amount of uh, hard drives, uh, storage options, and also uh, obviously if you can get um, an XL uh, ATX motherboard or even an HPTX uh, motherboard, uh, you've got some serious uh, capability for putting up to quad SLI and you name it. So there's a lot of power um, needs for those kinds of configurations and so you can put a dual power supply set up in here. And uh, the power supply has to have an uh, ATX 1200 and now this power supply is kind of heavy, not that heavy, but it certainly would be able to be secured in here with the screws that come with it. But one of the things that I like, especially since I move my systems around quite a bit, I like an option that they provide for is a uh, power supply support bracket. And now this allows you to secure this bracket here and then mount the power supply through so it rests on there. And not only do they, uh, they also give you some um, adhesive uh, foam that you can mount onto the bracket so that your power supply uh, lays on there. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this bracket. It comes with the uh, the bracket and then two screws, the same screws that secure things to the uh, front base. Basically they use that to secure just about everything in this case so it makes it real easy. You're not fishing around for you know different screws to do this and that. The only time you, that comes into play is when you're mounting your various devices. So we've gone ahead and have the, uh, the brackets installed. And I'm going to go ahead and measure out a couple of spots here. And I'm going to take my uh, AX1200i. rest it in there and then get my screws and secure it in place and actually I'm going to go ahead and flip it around so that the fan brings in air from the vents on the door where the vent panels are and there we have the power supply installed and this panel comes out and you can do you can arrange it to be installed in the top position if you wanted it there as well. Here's a, uh, here's a shot from the back with the power supply installed. All right, looking back at the rear of the case, aside from the power supply that you saw installed in the optional spot for a second one, we do have at the top pass-throughs on either side of this double wide case. Now, um, Case Labs provides grommets. You have four grommets that you could use to put uh, in those spots you pop out these filler pieces. Why you would want to do that I don't know. This case has more than enough capability for water cooling inside so to bring tubing on the outside uh, is not something that I would ever want to do but I guess um, again just uh, gives you you know the opportunity to do that if you uh, are so inclined to need to run some tubing outside of the case. Now on the motherboard tray, as you can see, this motherboard tray has four thumb screws. They're spring-loaded and captive, so they do not come out. And this is the motherboard tray that slides out of the case. Now, you'll see here on the back, 
the motherboard tray has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten PCI slots. There uh, is a 120 uh, millimeter fan vent here. And then this is optional. You can get this as mesh, which I did, or you can also have it arranged for, uh, I believe they're 80 millimeter fans. There are three points that you can mount 80 millimeter fans, so they'll provide you with the mounting points for those. Uh, that's not what I chose to do, and there is no charge for that. You get the option of either the mesh or the mounts. And then here is your uh, rear I.O. feed. Now, uh, Case Labs also, since this tray does this remove, it can be used as a test bench. They give you options for some feet that you can mount on the bottom so that you can leave it on your bench if you wanted to use this some extended period of time on your bench. And they also provide a handle. And so here's a handle that's part of the kit. And with the handle installed, Very easy to remove. And reinstall. Now, the other side of the case in this particular uh, version of the uh, Magnum TH-10A that, uh, that I requested is a reverse layout case. So on uh, facing the case, the right-hand side, which would normally be the back and the standard one, when you open it up, you have the motherboard side of the tray here and then uh, plenty of space to mount uh, reservoirs and also bay space in the front using the flex space system to mount uh, hard drives or anything else that you want to mount in there. So just as we had on the other side these doors are uh, very easily removable and reversible and then this is an option. This is the XXL, the largest window that you can get. And this uh, is an option to get this version. There is an XL, which is about uh, four or five inches shorter. Um, and you could also then get it either uh, in, with no window or just ventilated. So um, again, it's part of the option system that Case Labs has for their cases. And now looking at the inside of the Magnum TH-10A, we have uh, the motherboard tray that you saw me removing and sliding out. And this tray uh, has, as you can see, various mounting points and they provide a kit of standoffs. And you can mount basically on this particular tray, the, this is the XL ATX tray. You can mount everything from a mini ITX all the way up to an XL ATX. You can uh, also have an SSB, you can have an EATX. Um, the only thing that this will not support is the HP TX. So for that, you would require, uh, it's a different option, it would come with a different tray, and since that tray is deeper, it would actually have a different mid-plane that actually uh, would give you more of extension uh, into, the, uh, into the cutout here of the body. So that is an option if you wanted to go with that uh, style of uh, motherboard tray that is something you would uh, order at the time you configured your your TH-10A. Now the dimensions of the motherboard chamber are 7.6 inches uh, wide if you will or if you're looking from the side deep by 25.4 uh, inches this way depth wise and 24.4 inches high. Now aside from the motherboard tray, you also have uh, options to mount reservoirs. And that's what these two plates are. This is an option, two single reservoir mount plates. So you can mount them here. You would have to drill the holes to secure them on here. Um, but you can also get this in a one single plate. So there's one plate version of this that mounts right there. So you have the option to mount uh, a reservoir here. You would have to drill the holes to mount it if you want. And then you could mount other things there. You don't have to have two reservoirs, of course, in the system. That's completely up to you. But that is uh, some of the, as one of the options you have with the Magnum TH-10A. Then you also notice there are more uh, grommet, grommeted areas or feed-throughs. And again, for cabling, if you do have uh, reservoirs there, you're going to need to bring any power to them or if you plan on putting your ra radiator on the other side in the power supply compartment then you're going to need to have space to bring the tubing and, uh, through so certainly could be done there and you'll see down here behind this flex bay there's another one that's the same size as that now speaking about flex bays on the other side of the case the power supply chamber compartment 
you saw um, that was a hard mounted uh, a Mac 101 tray and that is a tray for mounting your hard drives here you see something similar however this is in the flex bay so the flex bay is just that it's flexible to allow you to do many different things and mount many different components this particular um, flex bay this is a Mac 101 for the flex bay and the only difference between the way this mounts and the one that you saw in the power supply compartment chamber is that uh, this has again for four uh, drives, you can four three and a half inch hard drives, uh, but uh, the orientation of the hard drives would be vertical rather than horizontal, which they were on the other one. And it also has a space for mounting a fan in the front of here. The only difference is that this secures to a flex bay, uh, whereas the other one just mounts directly to the uh, uh, bay of the case and it has the, just a fixed positioning. But this you can move and adjust anywhere in this area here. Now, not only can you mount hard drives, uh, three and a half inch devices uh, in this type of uh, setup, but there are many different options, flex bay options that you can use to mount fan controllers, DVD drives, uh, and even radiators. Although there's tons of radiator mounting places in this case on both sides in the motherboard chamber compartment and in the power supply chamber compartment, you can also mount them in the front here. So I have a few of those uh, flex bay optional uh, pieces that I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you and show you how they uh, uh, can be used. Now on this TH10A on the right hand side we have the motherboard chamber side and this is where we have the flex base. Now the configuration I ordered had a bunch of uh, solid panels but you can also get them uh, ventilated and there are other options such as this uh, Mac 101 um, tray. This is also a uh, fan plus hard drive uh, carrier that uh, is designed for the flex base side. In order to though install anything else in there you first have to remove these filler plates. Uh, so in order to do that, uh, you'll remove the screws on either side of the uh, flex bay plate and then you'll pop it out. And it has the same type of uh, uh, guides where the guide pins go through as you saw when I installed the, uh, the uh, fixed side uh, 101 hard drive bay. Just you line the, uh, the nipples uh, through that plate, push it through and then there are um, inserts that you would uh, screw the uh, the uh, universal um, thumb screw into the front of them. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to install a couple of uh, different uh, devices in the five and a quarter inch bays here. And uh, let me get you up close to show you how that system works. Now the flex base system allows you to mount various five and a quarter inch devices in the front flex base. Now depending on the design of your five and a quarter inch device, uh, you will need different style brackets. So for devices that are not that deep, such as maybe a fan controller, you would use one of these short brackets that have the slotted uh, mounting points and also a couple of fixed ones so you can secure it whichever way uh, suits you best. And then it has the guide pin hole and then a threaded insert that you would secure using the thumb screws that are provided. And they also provide some M3 screws, so you can use those to mount your um, DVD drives or anything else that needs an M3. And also they provide some 632 screws. And then uh, we have also a longer set of brackets, again slotted, so it give you some flexibility. And this would be designed for devices that are uh, much deeper in length, for example, an actual DVD drive. And we have some samples of those, and I'll show you right now. So as you can see here, we have both on the DVD drive, the longer set of mounting uh, flex bay rails with, uh, that are slotted so it can accommodate uh, some adjustment depending on the device and then also a short set of rails that we use for this particular fan controller. And then they're secured into the front by the two screws that secure through to the inserts in the brackets. Now aside from those two, we also have then additionally, optionally, you can buy these uh, double tall. These, these will fit in, uh, take up the space of two five and a quarter inch uh, bays in the front of the TH10A. Now these are optional, you'd have to buy these, but these uh, provide slots as well. And these are designed for, for um, you know, housing something that's much heavier. For example, a uh, dual bay reservoir, uh, something of that nature that you want to mount in the flex bay space. 
So again, you would have two brackets and they would mount to either side with the appropriate screws and you can install them into the flex bay uh, just as I just shown you for the fan controller and for the uh, DVD drive. Now you've seen this is the uh, flex bay Mac 101 tray that has basically it's a fan um, flex bay with a hard drive uh, holder attached to it and you can get just only a fan flex bay mount so you can actually mount a 120 millimeter fan in here and actually if you wanted to you could uh, strap onto the back of that 120 millimeter radiator if you wanted to um, but there are other uh, radiator options that you can get for the front of this flex bay and what I'm going to do here is remove this here to show you uh, one, one such option. Now you can mount radiators in the flex bay here. Uh, you can mount everything from a 120.2 which is what I have right here. This basically, and this is actually is in gun, the gunmetal gray. This is from a different uh, case configuration, but this flex space system works in just about all of the uh, case labs cases. And this flex bay here has a housing for two fans that you see that are mounted inside. And then I have the radiator mounted uh, to the back of it. And this is just a slim, a Nexus GTS 240 um, that's been custom painted by uh, Performance PCs. But this um, assembly here allows me to mount a uh, 240 rad right here in the front of the case and I could put a fan on the bottom and again I could put it in any anywhere I want now they uh, have this in not only a 120 by 2 but you can get a 120 by 3 so basically a 360 millimeter rad uh, and also 120 by 4 you can get a, uh, a uh, 480 that would fit in this space so again this, these are options that you can get but you would need to configure that um, when you order the case or you can buy it as an option afterwards if you change your mind and you're gonna uh, you know, add to your system or reconfigure it, you can go ahead and, and buy the particular flex bay configuration you need. And all that information is available on their, their website. So um, here you see I have um, this uh, flex bay mounted in here. We can mount it up here or in the middle or down all the way to the bottom. And that's the beauty of the flex bays. You can uh, position it in any particular configuration that you want, uh, given the space that you have here. And then you can just put in the, you know, the old filler plates back where you don't need them. So, uh, and you can get them in uh, one bay, two bay, and three bays worth of, uh, of filler plates. And they come with the system as well, depending on the configurations that you order. So that is uh, some of the options in the flex bays here. And we talked about um, single five and a quarter inch device mounts plus some fans and uh, radiators. So in addition to the flex bay you could use that to mount a radiator but if you didn't want to if you wanted to keep that compartment free of uh, uh, any radiators uh, you can put it on the power supply side and here where I'm showing you in this chamber uh, up at the top we have a 60 mil rad with uh, fans and push pull on the top and as you can see the motherboard tray ends right there and there's still plenty of space to feed through cables on uh, tubing or whatever it is you need to pass through there so this exact same spacing is available on the other side so you can mount two radiators and a push pull in this configuration now one of the key things to note is the reason why you can do that on this configuration is because of the uh, top that I uh, the optional top that I uh, got there is a flat top that does not provide the thickness of a, a set of fans which is what you see right up there 25 mils there's a 31 millimeter um, top and I'll go ahead and uh, bring that out so you can see how it looks with it uh, mounted on top of it now the thickness of this top is 30 31 millimeters and what I'm going to go ahead and do is place this 
and over the top of here. And that covers it completely. And so you have the top here, the door, which is finished right there. And you have a push-pull configuration with complete uh, venting. In this particular um, configuration, I have the air coming in through the front and then up and out through the top. Now this is an optional top. You can also get a 120 millimeter top as well. So you could actually put the full configuration of fans and a radiator in the top. So that would give you, if you had a 60 mil thick brad and two fans, that's basically 110 millimeters, right? 25 and 25 and 60. And so uh, that gives you 110. And so you have that in the space at the top so it does not affect anything going on in your chambers. So again, that's an option if you choose to do that. So I've shown you mounting a radiator in the front of the TH-10A using the flex bay mount options. We've also looked at mounting a radiator in the top of the TH-10A with the drop-in mounts. You can also mount a radiator with an option known as the side mount bracket. Now this bracket right here will house up to a 480 millimeter radiator and you can adjust it up and down on this uh, side of the case in the motherboard chamber as well as on the power supply chamber. This is a reversible bracket. You can put it on the other side as well. So basically you have complete flexibility on adjusting this radiator. The one thing you will have to consider however is if you're going to mount a side mount radiator in this case you're going to need doors that are ventilated which are an option and you can certainly get your doors that have the ventilated panels in them. So again it just goes to show you the uh, flexibility that Case Labs offers with the various options that you can get uh, for this case. Uh, another place to mount radiators is in the bottom of the case. Now these panels right here remove and there are four 120 millimeter fan mounts there and of course you can mount the fans on there and place up to 480 millimeter rad on top of them and depending how thick your radiator is you can get a full complete push-pull configuration in the bottom of this TH-10A on both sides, not just this motherboard compartment, but also on the um, power supply chamber as well. So it's just uh, mind-boggling the options that you have uh, for mounting radiators for your water cooling solution in this case. And if that wasn't enough, Case Labs also offers a pedestal. And this pedestal is basically a, a deep cavity that the TH-10A would sit on that allows you to mount uh, radiators and um, even hard drive uh, bays if you wanted inside of the pedestal. Basically this whole case would sit on top of it and mounts to it and you would use options like these radiator side mounts, uh, two of them, and one in each side of the uh, pedestal that allows you to mount the radiators and your fans to move all of your water cooling out of this compartment uh, or even the power supply compartment and mount it in the bottom of your um, system. Or if you needed to have even more, you can you know, have both the radiators in the bottom pedestal along with wherever you needed it here inside of this case. So it's just mind-boggling the options that Case Labs has provided for you to uh, satisfy your configuration and water cooling needs. So that's just about all I have on the options and features for the TH-10A. Now one of the things would probably be helpful to do is uh, let's mount some hardware in here and give you an idea of what it might look like in case you're interested in this particular case for your next system. So here's just a quick recap on some of the items that I've installed into the TH-10A. The 360 millimeter rad in the drop-in mount in the top uh, that is in push-pull. We have the power supply mounted in the lower of the two power supply mounting uh, points with a power supply support bracket. We have a fixed hard drive bay with a fan mounted in the front. And again, all of this is in the power supply chamber side of the TH-10A. And in the bottom, you could put in up to a 480 millimeter rat. And on the motherboard chamber side, we have a DVD player mounted in the flex bay, a fan controller mounted in the flex bay, a 240 millimeter radiator mounted in the flex bay. We have uh, the full motherboard tray, an ATX motherboard, 
uh, installed and we have a 480 millimeter rad and push pull with still plenty of space. And the two panels that you see in the center there is where you would mount uh, your reservoirs uh, to be in full view. So let's go ahead and wrap up this review. So there you have it guys. That's the Case Labs Magnum TH-10A double wide case. From a quality and cosmetic standpoint, the quality of this case is outstanding. Uh, the thickness of the aluminum in the frame and the panels is much better than uh, what you get in most all other cases. The uh, paint is an uh, awesome powder cone, very durable. The uh, various uh, colors that you can get and also get it in a primer gray to be able to paint it in any color that you want to paint it in is available. The, um, you know, the design of it is a sleek industrial style design, which I particularly like. Uh, I love this case and the design of it. Uh, if you're into more plasticky molded parts uh, that you can get from most of the other cookie cutter, uh, you know, case manufacturers, well, I mean, that's a personal preference, but I think the design of this uh, case and the looks of it are fantastic, especially with all of the options for ventilation and windows and things, uh, just outstanding. From a performance standpoint, uh, this case is a, a joy to build in. I got to tell you, uh, it is so easy. There's so much room, so much flexibility. The options that they provide for your water cooling needs are uh, outstanding. And if you just wanted to do a basic air cooled, well, that's easily done. Um, just, a, just a joy to be able to build in. The panels will pop off easily. The uh, same screw is used just about everywhere to mount any of the uh, bracketry to the uh, unit. And then all of the options come with the hardware you need. The case comes with a, a ton of hardware that you need for mounting, like for example, the standoffs on the motherboard tray. They even give you an extra bag of spare parts as well. So um, really just from a performance standpoint, um, it, it is great. I have absolutely no problems with it. About the only thing that this case does not offer uh, native is the ability to mount an SSD. But with a three and a half inch adapter to a two and a half inch uh, SSD bracket, which you, which many come with, it's not a problem. So I, I won't take anything away from that. It's uh, not like you have to go out and make something. So uh, again, from a performance standpoint, just outstanding joy. And if this case um, is does not have what you need uh, to put your water cooling in it, again, they have options that allow you to put a pedestal under this guy and uh, or uh, extend the height of the unit and have additional cooling cap capability in the top. So uh, really, I think they've thought just about everything. Um, this case, if you buy this case, I think it's about the only case you're ever going to need. Like I said, if you want to upgrade or in increase anything, they have options for you that allow you to grow your system if you need to. Um, about the only other thing to talk about really is the price. The price of this case is $569. Now that might be a little bit expensive, but again, remember, um, this is probably the only case that you're ever going to need. So it has everything that I think you could possibly want in it. and. Um, you know, for that, I, you know, I, I don't think that that's a, that's a big cost. It's an investment. So anyway, guys, it's, um, that's all I got from Ron Nut. I have to give this case five nuts, five out of five. Uh, again, overall outstanding price, performance, and quality um, for the value you get out of this case now and in the future. So um, anyway, I hope you liked this review. If you did, please like and favorite. And please subscribe if you want to see more of this. And as a matter of fact, I will be building a system into this case. So uh, if you want to see that, please subscribe so that you get notified and you'll be able to see it as it goes. I'll do a build log for you. Anyway, that's it from Ron's and Nut. Thanks for watching.